Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Be sure to cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley, podcastalley.greatdetectives.net, and follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Well, before we do get started, I want to encourage you to be sure and enjoy all the articles we post at greatdetectives.net. We post one to two every week, uh, and they include reviews of books. We've been doing a lot of Nero Wolf book reviews, but we also reviewed Columbo Collection and a Father Brown book as well. And some history of some great uh, old radio programs, many of which forgotten, such as The Family Doctor, The Adventures of Babe Ruth. You can enjoy all of these for free at greatdetectives.net, and you can also have them automatically delivered to your Kindle, And you can try that service out free for two weeks. Well, today's episode is entitled Death and the Purple Cow. Enjoy. William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Murderers rarely have many friends. People can't keep up with them. You see, folks, they set such a killing pace. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. In my business, a guy doesn't have many friends. We know too much about people. The wrong kind of things, and maybe the wrong kind of people. Or are there any different kinds? I wouldn't know the answer to that one. But after time enough, and jobs enough, about the only thing the investigator can be sure is clean is his license. If he keeps it under glass. The hours are lousy, too. Hello, Willie. Evening, Mr. Craig. You want some coffee? In Willie's wagon? Lay off the cracks. It looks like coffee. It smells like coffee. And it tastes like sulfuric acid. I'll have a cup. Thanks. How about some nourishment? I'll have a couple of donuts instead. A couple? What do you think I am, a weightlifter? (laughs) Just watch your teeth working on them. Hey, uh, you on a job? No. Well, then, what's keeping you up this late? Your coffee, mostly. You didn't have any before you walked in here. I can dream, can't I? Besides... Yeah? I I felt like company. Private eye gets tired of his own thoughts pretty quick. Why don't you quit thinking? I did half a dozen years ago. I've been a happy man since... Uh, Business. What'll it be, bud? Does it have to be anything? I, uh... I've seen one of those before. Back up. Against the wall, huh? Sure. Hold it, Craig. The personal touch? Just sit there. Work on your donuts and coffee. I eat just as well without a gun. That's to keep you quiet, not stimulate your appetite. Thanks for explaining. Why do I have to be quiet? I want it that way. Uh Uh-huh. This keep Craig quiet week? Yeah. I just passed the resolution. In a little while, I'm going to get sleepy. Don't let it bother you. My point is, do I have to be quiet only in Willie's wagon, or can I go be quiet at home? Craig. Yeah? I tried for you at your office first. The elevator man told me you'd probably be here. Jake's a prophet. Anybody else comes calling for you, the elevator man will tell him the same thing. He'll make it sound like a procession visiting Craig at midnight. Business isn't that good. Not a procession. One customer. You could give him a name? Sure. Sure. And when he gets here, what happened? I discourage him about consulting you. You, uh, reason with him? I discourage him. Hey, bud, how about me sitting down? You got a seat back at the counter? No, but there's one in the kitchen. Also a telephone? I ain't checked recently. Keep leaning against the wall. This customer of mine, I suppose he looks in here before he pushes the door open. So? He'll spot you. That's all right. Hmm. Look, if I'm going to stay awake, I'll need more coffee. You? Yeah? 
Mr. Craig wants some more coffee. Okay. Uh, there's your coffee, Mr. Craig. Thanks. Well, it's an awful slow client I'm supposed to have. You'll be alone. Maybe you frighten him off tonight. What happens tomorrow? People run out of tomorrow sometimes. Yeah. All right, uh, that could be him. Stay put, boys. I could use a client. Not this one. It won't be any use at all. Too bad. Hey, Willie, what'd you put in this cup? Huh? Tastes more like concentrated lye than coffee. Shut up. It's an insult, not coffee. Here, you try it. It was hot, wasn't it? I'll take the gun now. What the? Those shots came from the door. Yeah. I took the corner on a couple of wheels. Couldn't spot the license. That guy's bleeding all over the floor. Yeah. Well, he'll stop in a little while, Willie. No more blood. Yeah? Yeah. His heart isn't pumping it anymore. The coffee I'd spilled in his face caked before the cops got to Willie. It made him look very untidy. The deceased's name was John Largo, Mr. Craig. Thanks for telling me, Lieutenant Rogers. It would appear he was an executive from St. Louis. You mean executioner? A little early for indulging in theory, Barry. Not theory. The guy announced his job. The announcement was perhaps ambiguous. Largo was versatile. The numbers, jewels, slot machines. Okay, Trav. I know about a police officer's keeping his mind open. Must be drafty, though. Barry. Yeah? According to your report, Largo intended to discourage a client of yours. That's right. Which client? A client who hadn't hired me yet. But who had indicated he might. Trav, all these questions will maybe look good on a report, but I've told you all I know. I'm not happy about it. Well, maybe if I'd gone to college like you, I'd know more. The way it is... Now, you I... mustn't hold that college degree against me, Barry. I forgive you. Any psychiatrist will tell you it was my mother's fault. But I've got to bring something in for the captain. Isn't a fresh corpse enough? Trav let me go after a while. It had been a dull night. Willie's wagon was lousy with the press, and Trav had to concentrate on the department's public relations. I started for home, made a detour, and headed for the office on Madison Avenue. Jake would still be on duty, making sure nobody stole the building. Jake. Jake. Oh. Any cow wants to get milk, she can come to me. I ain't going out in the middle of the night. Jake, you're not on the farm anymore. What? Oh. Oh, too bad. You should have stayed up in Vermont. No, I got tired of it. Why? Too close to New Hampshire. Mm. I've been kind of expecting you. Yeah, I noticed your wide eyes. Jake, uh, a little over an hour ago, a small, fair-haired man was here asking for me. Yeah, I remember him. I told him you was out getting poisoned over at Willie's. Did he find you? He found me. What I'm more interested in is the second person who asked for me tonight. I don't blame you. Why? I said I don't blame you. Must be a Vermont accent. Uh, never mind blaming, uh... That second person was a client. I know that. That client of mine, from the looks of things, committed murder a half hour ago. Your office must be getting pretty crowded. My office? Uh, Jake, didn't you tell my client where I was? Client didn't ask. Preferred to wait in your office. In my... Oh, that's what you meant about it getting crowded. Yeah. But the murder didn't take place in my office. Not the one I'm talking about, anyway. That's nice. Makes less work for the cleaning women. But in that case... Never mind. Take me upstairs. Yep. Going up? Where else would I be going? I don't know. Same as my instructions. Always ask the passenger which direction he's going. Jake, uh, what kind of a man was he? Who's that? The one up in my office. Well, up in Vermont, we wouldn't call him a man. You wouldn't? No. What would you call him? A girl... This wasn't my night for appearing smart. 
I stared at Jake with my mouth open until we reached the third floor. By that time, I managed to get it shut. Jake went back downstairs. I went down the hall to my office and went in and discovered that we'd call her a girl in New York, too. Mr. Craig? Yeah? Sorry I kept you waiting. Oh, that's all right. After all, you didn't know I was waiting for you, did you? I guess I didn't. Well, uh, I was. Uh, you had an idea about hiring me? Actually, it, it it was my brother's idea. I see. Oh, that is, I'm Sally Marlin. My brother is Donald Marlin. It figures. You, you're laughing at me? No. I, I wouldn't like you to, even, even though I'm not doing this very well. Exactly what are you doing? Oh, explaining. Donald's in trouble. The world isn't doing too well either. Are you trying to make me angry? Yeah. Why? Maybe you'll get around to telling me why you're here. My brother Donald has been in trouble ever since he came back. He thought perhaps he might hire a good private detective who would help him. And for some reason that I can't understand, he decided to hire you. Thanks. Then why didn't he come here? He... He was afraid to leave the house. He sent you instead? Yes. What kind of trouble is he in? Well, the... The kind of trouble where he might get murdered. Usually a man in that kind of trouble goes to the cops. Donald can't. Why not? Well, he... He doesn't want to get into the papers. Things like that. He's shy? Mm Mm-hmm. Good night, Miss Marlin. What is... When it comes to protection, a private eye can't come within a couple of light years of the cops. Nobody afraid of being killed was ever that shy. Well, I'm sorry. It's because of the purple cow. The one nobody's ever seen? (laughs) Oh, no. No, this one is a little statue of a cow made out of purple glass. How much is it worth? Well, it's kind of an antique, and... Your brother has it, but neglected to get legal title to it? Something like that. That's why he can't go to the police. I'll have to see him. Oh, of course. We live at 39 Barchester. 39 Barchester. Mm-hmm. Uh, Donald gave me some money to... Uh, to... Well, I, I guess it's called a... A, a retainer? Uh-huh. Uh, $200. We'll consider it a retainer. I guess it's too late tonight for you to see Donald, but... Uh, the first thing in the morning, Miss Gray? The first thing in the morning. Then, good night. Good night. Miss Marlin. Uh, yes? You said your brother had been in trouble ever since he came back. Uh-huh. Ever since he came back from where? What? St. Louis, Mr. Craig. St. Louis. <laughs> Dead Mr. Largo had also been from St. Louis. I crossed to the door and opened it. Sally Marlin was waiting for the elevator. Jake would have his troubles waking up. The elevator would have its troubles climbing all the way up to the third floor. I used the back stairs. By the time Sally Marlin would make it to the lobby in the street, I ought to be ready for her. In my car, halfway down the block. I was. She used a cab. And we went riding. It wasn't a long ride. Her cab slowed down and stopped. I stopped. She paid the cabbie off and went inside. The cab scrammed. I started up. drove past the place she'd gone into and memorized the address. It was not 39 Barchester. (laughs) 39 Barchester was way over on the west side of town. Maybe Sally Marlin had stopped off at the other address for a drink. You can get drinks at the Club 44, not to mention a ringside seat at a roulette game. A hand at poker or a a thug for hire? 
Maybe Sally Marlin had been thirsty. I didn't stop at 39. The man in a creased hat and a bulging overcoat was trying too much to look like the local scenery. I cut around the block and wondered, there'd be an alley leading to the back of 39 Barchester. There was. There was a man there, too, making like an ash can. I parked on the next block and took a walk. I was going to have trouble visiting my client. I decided to have trouble in the alley. More privacy than out front. Hey, Bud. Huh? Got a match? Sure. Thanks. Forget it. How's life among the ash cans? Huh? Kind of cold, isn't it? It ain't warm. You'll be glad to get back to the club. No, I ain't kidding. Well, what are you waiting for? Cochran sent you. What do you think? Yeah, but he didn't say nothing about pulling me out of here. Hey, wait a minute. I seen you before. Is that supposed to be a big surprise? I seen you before. Your name's Craig. Or it gets around. You're a dick, a private dick. Says confidential investigator on my door. You don't need a gun. Keep your hand away from me. Wise guy, you... Not to make you... He didn't. He fell down instead. I thought he might be uncomfortable lying on a gun. So I disposed of it for him. I wondered if he'd thank me for it. Who's there? Craig. Say it again. Craig. You want me to wake the neighbors? Listen. I'm going to open the door slow. I want your hands in front of you and clean when I do. Okay. Otherwise, I start shooting. Hold it. Yeah. Come in. Thanks. I have to be careful. Sure. Sit down. Thanks. Man with a purple cow can't be too careful. What's a purple cow supposed to be? Something you find in St. Louis, the way I heard it. Uh, just making sure Sally got to you. She got to me. She's a good kid. Uh-huh. Marlon. Yeah? I could stand a little more information. For example, how did you get the purple cow in the first place? A friend of mine handed her to me. He ran an antique shop in St. Louis. Just gave it to you? Sure. The thing isn't worth more than a couple of bucks. And that's when all your trouble started. That's when it started. You could have yelled for the cop. Sure, I could have, but look. First of all, there were no witnesses around when I got that cow. Second, I didn't know what importance it had. Not until after I left St. Louis. Why didn't you get in touch with the man who had given you the cow? I tried to. And? Found out somebody had pumped him full of lead. This, uh, friend of yours, uh... Had a record? Yeah. And that was another reason I wanted to stay clear of the police. He'd been a fence. What kind of stolen goods did he concentrate on? Jewels, mostly. Is that the cow up on the mantelpiece? That's the cow, all right. I know what you're wondering, but no dice. It's made out of glass. I had it appraised. Maybe it's hollow. It's hollow. Nothing in it, either. You know a man named Largo? Largo? Small, fair-haired man. Uh, comes from St. Louis. No, I don't. Why? Oh, nothing important. You figuring on going out tonight? No. That's good. You'd have company if you did. What kind of company? A couple of hoods. Front and rear of the house. Hoods. That's the kind of thing I mean. Why are they after me? On account of a hunk of worthless glass? I don't know yet. Maybe I'll go ask some questions. Oh, these hoods, Marlin. Yeah? Work for a man named Cochran. They mean anything to you? Sure. That, that's the man my sister's going to marry. I used the front door. The mug in the alley might be resentful. I had no time to sue them. I had a headache. I wanted to go home and kill a couple of beers and sleep. Marlin was safe for the night. So was the cow. No reason why I shouldn't go home. Maybe that's why I didn't go home. Good evening, sir. Welcome to Club 44. Oh, I'm not a customer. Cochran, huh? Mr. Cochran? 
All right. Let's be formal. Mr. Cochran. Mr. Cochran's not in, sir. Okay. Take me to where he isn't in. <laughs> Hot. Listen, you... No, I'm too tired. Stop crowding. You're all alone compared to what I could do to... Tough? Big. You could be cut down. Let Cochran try it. Come on. Okay, take your hands off me. Just a sample. Let's go. Mr. Cochran isn't going to like this. Maybe I won't like Mr. Cochran. The gentleman is say you, Mr. Cochran. Gee, thanks. Mr. Craig. Craig. Hello, Miss Marlin. Hello, Cochran. I couldn't start nothing out in a club, Mr. Cochran. Don't be silly, sir. Mr. Craig is always welcome. Run along, huh? Yes. What are you doing here, Mr. Craig? I confused it with 39 Barchester, maybe. The same way you did. I... Nice to meet you, Mr. Craig. Uh-huh. Of course, I'm curious about why... Sally Marlin hired me for her brother. She was worried about him, so she left my office and promptly headed here. She, uh... Didn't want to worry alone. Exactly what I was thinking. So I went on to 39 Barchester. Oh? The man watching the alley may have a little trouble with solid food for a while. I see. Marlon and I had a nice visit. And you know about Sally and myself. Sure. I also know you put those men on Marlon. Well, to protect him. Then why do you want me? I didn't know that Mr. Cochran would be able to help my brother. You did say help? Uh, we've uh, had a lovely conversation. I think it's over now. I think it isn't. You must have a reason. I was hired to do something about the trouble Marlon's in. And you're doing it here? Let's say I'm trying to. I hardly appreciate your sweaty efforts. But you're the one who's sweating. Know a man named Largo Cochran? Yes, I... Never mind. He's dead. Why? Wonderful thing. The radio. Uh-huh. Largo made a nice haul in St. Louis. Jewels. He turned them over to a fence who ran an antique store. How interesting. It gets better as we go along. The fence then turned around and handed Marlin a purple cow. Marlin left town. Largo left town right after him. To wind up dead on the floor of a hamburger joint. What a distressing place to die. I don't think Largo was bothered about the decor. He killed the antique boy when he found out his jewels were gone. He was there for after Marlin, presumably? Presumably. In that case... Sir, I was in the hamburger joint when Largo was killed. If you will eat such dreadful stuff. You knew Largo. You knew all about Marlin and the purple cow through Sally here. You have a couple of boys sitting on Marlin's tail. Mr. Cochran... How much of a chance do you think you'd have in front of a jury? Well, you agree with me. Not much of a chance. Phil, that guy... Shut up. What Mr. Craig has forgotten is that he's the only one outside of ourselves who knows all these things. So? I have no intention of being brought before a jury. There's a pretty well-known road paved with intentions, Cochran. I'm not traveling as yet, Craig, but I rather think you are. Keep your hands still. Sally, see if he has a gun. Bill, I don't... See if he has a gun. All right. He... He had a gun, Bill. Throw it here. All right. Sally? Yes? Run along home. Bill, I won't let you. Don't be a fool. You can put me in the chair. Sally, I told you. I can't let you do it. You're in my way, you idiot. (laughs) Craig, killing the lights won't help you. You've no gun, Craig. Be still, I can't hear. Uh, oh, my arm! I don't twist down for fun. Grab it! Grab it! All right. Thanks. The light, Sally. Yes, sir. The thing to do in the dark is keep quiet, Cochran, then nobody knows where you are. I'll know better next time. Sure, if there is a next time. Speak up, Cochran. I'll feed you the answers if it's your boys. Oh, Who's there? Lieutenant Rogers, homicide. What do you know? Come in, Trev. Oh, Lieutenant Rogers, and hello, Marlon. Hello. Donald. I decided to yell for help to the cops. About time, too. After you left me, Craig, I began to worry. About those men watching the house, keeping me tied up, waiting, waiting. Now, take it easy. I'm all right. I worried about you, too. I knew you were coming here. Thanks. And about Sally. I didn't want her to... Commit herself. This is ridiculous. What is, Cochran? The insinuation that I, 
But I killed Largo. That why Craig was holding a gun on you? He... He thought... He was mistaken. Barry? He might have killed me, Tram. A very solid vote of confidence. One thing bothers me. A modest man. That's because I never uh, went... Barry, to... Barry, Barry, Barry. Okay, I'll save it. The thing that bothers me is, how did Largo find out Marlin was going to hire me? Seems like a fair question. Would anyone here like to answer it? Maybe we could throw a couple of possibilities out. Marlin wouldn't have told Largo for a lot of reasons. Among them, the fact that Largo was gunning for him. Marlin, therefore, didn't. Would Sally? I never even knew this, this Largo. A reasonable reply. You're accepting it, Barry? Uh-huh. That leaves us... Now, wait. Perhaps... Perhaps I did tell Largo something about it. You found out through Sally? That's true. Oh, Bill. I'm sorry, darling, but... You see, I've known Largo for a long time. When Largo told me he was after your brother, I thought perhaps I... I might discourage him. It's an explanation. You like it, Barry? Not much. Cochran told Largo because he hoped Largo would kill Marlin. (gasps) Oh, no. Only reason that means anything. Then Cochran might inherit the purple cow. But the purple cow is worthless. That can wait till later. Sally, you told your brother that you'd mentioned the business of hiring me to Cochran? Well, I guess so. I I I... demand a lawyer. You'll get one and a jury. You know something, Tram? Something like what? Cochran was right when he said it was ridiculous. When he said what was ridiculous? That he'd kill Largo. Oh? Because he didn't. Well, this is a fine time to tell me. Who did? The person who understood my last question to Sally. The person who's making a beeline for the death. Get the gun on it! You mean... You mean it was... Sure. Your brother, Mr. Donald Marlin. Mr. Marlin was very silent after that. It didn't take long to book him. Cochran didn't bother going along for the ride, but Sally did. That's that. Sorry, Miss Marlin. Well, I've always known Donald wasn't... wasn't very... Uh, uh, Barry. Yeah? Before the D.A. embarrasses me, suppose you tell me why I've locked him up? Sure. He was the only possibility who didn't know Largo. I refuse to stand here and feed you questions. Use the narrative form. <laughs> we'll take a minute. Lago, back at the hamburger joint, when he was waiting for my client to show up, said he wasn't worried about being spotted before he could kill him. That meant my client didn't know Lago. It was Marlin's idea all along to kill Lago and implicate Cochran for the killing. But for a purple cow? You've got Marlin's keys. One of them must be for a safe deposit box. The boys are already checking. Nice work, Trav. Now, once you pointed a finger at Marlin, I realized that he was the only source for the purple cow fantasy. Actually, the antique store fence in St. Louis must have slipped the jewels to Marlin in an effort to defraud Largo. So Marlin invented the purple cow as a a red herring? We're getting our colors mixed, but uh, that had to be the idea. Yes. Good night, Mr. Craig. Good night, Miss Marlin. I, uh... Can't think of a last line. Well, I can't either, but... Oh, you've been sweet, Mr. Craig. You never suspected me. Does there have to be a last line? No. No. Good night, folks. See you next week. You have been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, Death and the Purple Cow, was written by Lou Vittis. Next week, it's a strange story titled Ghost of a Chance, about which Barry Craig has this to say. In next week's story, a man comes back from the dead to haunt a wife who's been dead almost as long as he has, in an insurance scheme that almost, but not quite, cancels out yours truly. 
See you next week, folks. <laughs> Featured in the role of Sally was Arlene Blackburn. Barry Craig, starring William Gargan, was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is Don Pardo speaking. Now enjoy Meredith Wilson's Music Room on NBC. Welcome back. Well, I don't get why they didn't take the guy who had been threatening Craig uh, with a gun. Um, why they didn't take that guy away. Um, but, um, well, after a lot of twists and turns, we finally got the right killer. So that's pretty much all there is. So much for the purple cow. Well, remember... If you get the show through uh, iTunes, be sure to rate us on iTunes. We've got 87 ratings, and uh, we appreciate that. But that'll do it. Uh, give us a call, 208-991-4783. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off. <laughs>